Oh, hey, how's it going? Didn't see you there. So I spent the past several years, decades, some would even say millennia, hard at work. Hard at work developing a solution. No, a formula. A formula to answer the age-old question, how to build muscle. And I think, I don't want to jinx myself, but I think I finally got it. And I boiled it down to three main parts so that it's easy to understand whether you've been lifting for 10 years or 10 days. So sit tight and allow me to drop some knowledge. Knowledge. No, 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 knowledge. All right, so the first part of the formula is called progressive overload. And if you're unfamiliar with the term progressive overload, it basically means introducing stress or stimulus to the human body through exercise gradually over time but the key word to emphasize here is gradually. So stress can come in a variety of different ways. A lot of people talk about it in terms of number of repetitions, number of sets, the intensity, but most commonly as weight. But regardless what you're measuring, it's important to increase it gradually so you don't injure yourself or reach a training plateau. I highly recommend keeping a running record of the workouts that you do so that you are progressing at the appropriate speed. Uh, you can do this on apps that you can download on your phone, but nothing really beats writing it down on paper or just writing it in the notes on your phone. So you might be wondering, what's the appropriate rate to progress at and what should I be expecting, right? Um, and it really depends on your training style, your experience in the gym, and your goals. Because let's just say, for example, someone who's training for muscular size or hypertrophy, um, they're typically having their rep ranges a little bit higher, like 8 to 12, 15, sometimes like 20, and their intensity is lower, so like 70 to 85% of their rep maximum. Uh, compare that to someone who's training for strength, where their rep ranges are a little bit lower, like one to six, and their intensity is a little bit higher, like 80 to 95% of their rep maximum. The two people are gonna experience their progression in different ways. So the person training for muscular size is gonna experience more gains in far as how many reps they can do and actual muscular size, as opposed to the person who is training for strength while well, they're experiencing progression in the number of weights that they're lifting and actual physical strength. So it's important to set those expectations for yourself so you know what you're getting into in any exercise program. So the next piece of the formula is called consistency. And it sounds simple, but it's very, very important. Uh, the human body, the human body is such a beautiful and efficient machine. It's constantly finding the fastest and best ways to overcome the problems that it encounters. So same principle goes with training. When you introduce the stimulus, the stress onto the human body, it finds ways to best overcome that stress and adapt. So when you're consistent and when you're diligent with your training and you're constantly introducing the stress to the human body, it's always adapting and always improving, thus making you healthier, stronger, and better over the long run. The last piece of the puzzle is, of course, nutrition. Because I don't care if you're going 110% in the gym every single day. If your diet is bad, your results will just be a fraction of their true potential. And honestly, it all starts with eating enough. A lot of teenagers complain that they're hard gainers or that they can't gain weight no matter how much they eat or how hard they work in the gym. But for a lot of these people, not everyone, for a lot of these people, it can honestly just be fixed by eating enough protein. Um, a lot of these people neglect protein, they're eating lots of carbs and fats. So it's important to follow the general guideline of about 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And for active boys, I'd recommend 3 to 4,000 calories a day, active girls around 2 to 3,000. Um, as teenagers, you're just naturally more active, and you got school, you got sports, and not to mention your metabolism is just naturally higher at your age. So make sure that you're eating enough food with protein. A couple other good nutritional guidelines is to watch your electrolyte levels. Um, after you work out, they're often lost in sweat, so like sodium and potassium. So good foods to combat that are bananas, avocados, bell peppers, and your leafy greens, so like spinach and kale, as well as adequate carbohydrate intake. So a lot of people talk about enough protein, you know, make sure you eat your protein after your workout, which is important, but carbohydrates are also very important to replenish those glycogen storages. So whole grains, breads, you know, beans, pasta, those are all good, but remember that fruits and vegetables are also really good sources of carbs, but they also come with those essential vitamins and minerals that your body needs. So those are some general nutritional guidelines that I think will help you guys out. So we have our three parts, right? 
how do they all come together into this magical formula that will suddenly bring me all the joy and happiness in my life that I've ever wanted? Well, it's simpler than you might think. So first, we take our efforts in the gym, which lead to progressive overload, take the consistency that multiply those efforts, when you add proper nutrition to that, boom, gets the results that you always wanted. So the lesson here, guys, to make it even simpler, is to work smart, work hard, and have patience. If you do those three things, I guarantee, I guarantee that you'll see results. So that's my formula, guys. That's the video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave it a like. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you're not already. I got a bunch more videos coming out soon. Uh, with that, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.